Joining me now is Minira Wilson, the Lib Dem health spokesperson, Labour's Alex Norris, the Shadow Public Health Minister, and the Conservative MP, Reman Chisti. Very good to talk to you all this evening. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. So let's uh, talk, uh, let's get the overview first of all. And Reman Chisti, this is a gamble, whichever way you look at it. No one knows what is going to happen. But Dermot, the question is this, if not now, then when? And for me, this is about cautious optimism. And of course, we have to take into account, you know, the, Citizens around our country have suffered immensely and, and they've contributed immensely to where we are now by abiding by the rules that the government put into place. And the situation now is, as a result of the government's successful rollout of the vaccination programme and investment in the vaccination at, at the earliest stage, um, we have been able to get to this point where people can start to get back their freedoms. And as a result of those decisions the government have taken, the successful rollout of the vaccination programme, where 80%, 68% of individuals have had double vaccinations. And as a result of that, and taking into account the hospitalisation uh, rates are very low compared to where they were uh, before, taking into account the summer period is where you have the transmission okay. is at its lowest. We need to be able to be in a position to move forward. Right. And therefore, I think this is the right thing and the right decision to make us uh, uh, okay. Uh, reaction from the others. Munira Wilson. Uh, high vaccination rates. We all know that it's uh, the summer. Relatively low transmission, if we can really say that. So, um, if not now, when? Well, I know the government keep using this line. The problem that we've got now is that with um, the case rates uh, skyrocketing the way they are and hospitalizations going up, we've already had the chief medical officer say at the end of last week that he could envisage restrictions being reintroduced in just five weeks' time with the peak of the wave expected to be at the end of August. Now, just think about that timing. That's just before schools are due to return. Um, and I think parents up and down the country are, might be horrified that this could mean restrictions in our schools. I did um, challenge a minister about this today in the House of Commons, uh, and he didn't provide me any reassurances whatsoever. So uh, I think it is true to say, as many experts around the world have suggested, this is an experiment. Uh, and I think some some restrictions, such as keeping masks in place, particularly on public transport, um, boosting testing capacity, it's actually reducing. My big test centre here at the at Twickenham Rugby Stadium is due to close next month. Mm -hmm. People are reporting to me they're struggling to get uh, access to PCR and lateral flow tests, just as case rates are skyrocketing and we're okay. opening up. And, of course, we had the massive announcement today on vaccine passports. Right. I mean, this is restrictions by stealth, by the back door. Make no okay. mistake. We'll it's get on to that in a moment or two. But, uh, Alex Norris, um, uh, you're self-isolating, aren't you? Like uh, like the Prime Minister, indicative of the, of the high number of cases around at the moment. So something of a gamble? Yeah, I mean, I have to say that if not now, then when's about the quality of political leadership that you'd find in a playground. Um, the good news is that the vaccine, as Raymond says, does mean that we are able to open up significant bits of British life that have been closed for a long time. That's very good news. The gamble in this is why on earth we're throwing off all the extra bits that frankly don't cost us as much, like wearing a mask, like being able to work at home uh, if your job allows you to, uh, proper support for those on who need to self-isolate. Why we're not doing those things is the real gamble at a time when the infection rates are rising. The government have basically got towards the end of the pandemic and given it, it seems, given up and have just thrown it all in the air, which frankly is reckless leadership. Raman Chisti, I want to ask you about that point uh, touched on uh, by Munira Wilson and the bombshell from the uh, Prime Minister today uh, about vaccine passports, proof of vaccination for nightclubs and uh, other packed venues. I mean... If you're going to do it, why not do it now or not do it at all? Well, I think at the end of the day, the, question, the point I would say is about individual responsibility. And we have a situation where 18, 35% uh, of 18 to 30 year olds, uh, and that's around 3 million people, um, have not uh, had any vaccination at all. That's their choice. But at the end of the day, it's about individual responsibility. And as we move forward, and what I would say to, to uh, the, the point just being made about the end of the pandemic, we are not near the end of the pandemic. There is a long way to go. We've made significant progress in moving forward to getting back some of our freedoms. But we have to learn to live with this. 
And a way to learn to live with this is first to ensure that our citizens, the first duty of the state is to protect your citizens, get the vaccination. The United Kingdom was one of the first countries in Europe to get the deployment out and one of the best in the world to get it where it needs to be now. And as a result of that, as we move forward, we have to ensure that individuals use common sense and individual responsibility. So okay. in September, you know, now that we're having, we, we, you know, we're opening up September, schools come right. back, we've got the winter period. And then we okay, have that's to ensure well, that well, so I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we're back to the overview and I want to concentrate on this um, vaccine passport. So, Manira yeah. Wilson, uh, you touched on it there, but you want to see uh, continuing safety measures in place. Well, surely checking people's COVID status, vaccination status, is, is part of that. Well, look... The, I just want to come back on Raymond's point that this is about personal responsibility uh, because it's completely contradictory because actually introducing vaccine passports, particularly for nightclubs, is vaccination by coercion uh, by another route. They're illiberal. Well, encouragement. I mean, what's wrong with getting vaccinated? Businesses have told us that they can't implement it and they don't want to implement it. And I, I think it's absurd that actually today the, the vaccines minister said uh, a, a negative test is not enough. Well, actually, probably a negative test is probably a far better reflection of whether you're likely to be um, uh, symptomatic and infectious than a vaccine passport is, because as we've seen over the weekend, the health secretary has been double jabbed and he's got the virus now. So the idea oh, that well, actually well, ruling out tests but making sure that everybody's been vaccinated is absolutely pie in the sky. And actually, young people do want to get the vaccination. The point here is we know culturally, and we've heard this time and again, that young people want to be able to turn up to events where they don't have to book in. And proof of this was that Twickenham Stadium in May, there was a huge vaccination event and thousands of young people were queuing up. In fact, some were turned away disappointed. Right. So I really dislike this suggestion that young people don't want to do the right thing by themselves and society and don't want to get vaccinated, get, which is why let, we're... Let's get the Labour view on that. Uh, Alex Norris, some proving your vaccination status to enter packed venues. Good idea? Well, no, we've opposed domestic vaccine passports throughout and continue to do so. And there's no you know, credible case, as Manira Wilson said, that the, the minister's answer as to why proof of um, a negative test wouldn't do in that case, simply, you know, the, the answer was, was not very credible. You know, all I can say is that right now, about three miles down the road from me, people are going into Nottingham City Centre, they're going to be going into nightclubs and they're going to be allowed to do so. However, in about a month's time, they're not going to be safe to do so and must prove their vaccine okay. status. When the you, reality well, well, is this has been made up as the government goes along. I'm sorry, we're nearly out of time. We've got a lot to cover and you've all got a lot to say. So last quick thought from you all. Manira Wilson, do you think, I mean, the mantra used to be, we haven't heard it so much now, that this is irreversible or that we will see some kind of additional restrictions hitting us by the end of this year? Well, of course, we all want it to be irreversible. We want to be free for these, uh, from these terrible restrictions on our freedoms. But the problem is, is that we've already heard from the chief scientific advisor and the chief medical officer that there is a chance that they could return because we've got this experiment where we've got survival of the fittest, that the most vulnerable have been left hung out to dry by these policies and the young who haven't been fully all vaccinated. Right. Um, I, I really fear we will see more restrictions, which is why we need to take it easy, because we don't want them back. OK, Raman Chisti, um, do you think that we may see a, another screeching U-turn on this? This is an experiment. The fact is, that what I would say is, um, if I was a politician, uh, do I know all that's going to happen uh, in the future? I thought with you regards were. To COVID <laughs> you know, in terms of uh, the point, you know, the Manira is making that politicians should know all the answers with I regards see. to what may come. And I would like to say, politicians, if you don't know, like everybody else in life, what may come next, with science. So the, the point I would make is we have to learn to live with this and make decisions uh, at the time with regards to information we have. And so for me at the moment, today is absolutely right to open up our country, allow people to have their freedoms. However, in future, you know, if we need to take certain decisions in line with uh, the data available, then of course, any sensible government would have to look to do that. But in the meantime, we have to make sure we continue with a fantastic vaccination rollout right. program, which will all up can get the vaccination they need to get back to normal. 
Alex Norris, uh, sound reasonable to you um, po as a politician? Uh, deal with what's in front of you and uh, react to events if uh, the circumstances change? Well, that implies that you can't predict some of the impacts of your action. If we get rid of mandatory mask wearing indoors, if we don't, if we force people back to the office when they need, don't need to, we're going to make bigger impacts on infection rates than is necessary, and therefore restrictions tend to follow that. Raymond says any sensible government would consider this. Well, I'm afraid the events of the last 48 hours have shown that sensible government is in very, very short supply at the moment. Hey, great talking to you all. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Alex Norris, Munira Wilson and Ray Manchisti. Very good to see you.